Hi, Ebel278. Um, this video is going to be looking at the primary residence exclusion, which I'll refer to as the PRE for um, this video. And um, this is part of the capital gains tax consequences um, specifically to natural persons. And it deals with a, an exclusion um, when a natural person disposes of a primary residence. So the primary residence exclusion has to do with a primary residence. So we have a definition and it's a residence um, in which a natural person or a special trust holds an interest. In other words, there's, there's, an, there's ownership um, usually or a right to ownership. And this is important in which that natural person or a spouse of that person ordinarily resides or resided in as his or her main residence and uses or used it mainly for domestic purposes. So if we talk about a primary residence, we are talking essentially about the house that a natural person lives in, the place that they go home to every night after work, you know, and the place that they leave every morning when they go to work, for example. Um, if you look at what a residence is, and please have a look at this one so that, you know, you're not caught out if somebody uses a boat, for example. So a resident is defined as any structure, including a boat, a caravan or mobile home, which is used as a place of residence by a natural person together with any appurtenance belonging there to and enjoyed there with. In, in other words, anything that, you know, is attached to it. So it's not just fixed homes that you would see as you drive along in a suburb or, you know, um, in, in a town, it can also include a boat or a caravan or a mobile home, as long as that is used as a primary residence. So you have to know what a primary residence is and what qualifies as a residence. And then you only need to know that there are two exclusions. So you'll see if you have a look in the textbook, it goes on about, you know, what do you do or how do you apportion if a port, you know, part of the house was used for trade? We don't look at any of that in EVAL 2708. You only have to be able to do these two exclusions. Now there's two exclusions. There's a gross exclusion and then there's just the 2 million rand exclusion. But this can sometimes be confusing because both of them is a 2 million rand exclusion. So I'm going to take you through a couple of examples to clearly explain this to you. But the first exclusion that we'll be looking at is the 2 million rand gross exclusion. And this one says we will exclude any capital gain, right? So not just a cap, uh, not a capital loss, only a capital gain if your proceeds do not exceed 2 million rand. In other words, and that's what the gross refers to, it essentially looks at your proceeds. If your proceeds for the sale of your primary residence is less than 2 million rand and you have a capital gain, then we will disregard that capital gain in its entirety. If you go to the second exclusion, it says it's the 2 million rand capital gain or capital loss exclusion if proceeds exceed 2 million rand. So if you sell your residence and your proceeds exceed 2 million rand, then you are going to use the 2 million capital gain or capital loss. You will see though that if we go to this one, if your proceeds do not exceed 2 million and you're in a capital loss situation, you will also be using that one. Let's have a look at some examples. But before we do that, let me just, you know, wrap up some principles. Very important to understand that the primary residence exclusion is an exclusion per residence and not per person. What that means is you are only allowed to get it when you dispose of a primary residence. In, and it's that residence that qualifies for the exclusion. It's not an exclusion per person. If you think about the annual exclusion um, for CGT purposes, that's 40,000 Rand per year per natural person. This one works differently. This is per residence. Number two, if more than one natural person has ownership of the residence. So for example, in my case, my husband and I, we own our house in equal shares. So if we dispose of our house, there is only 
a 2 million rand exclusion for our residents. But because we have shared ownership, the, res the primary residence exclusion will be apportioned between us according to our ownership share. So, for example, if there's three natural persons that own the primary residence, we will calculate the capital gain or loss and then split that between each owner and then we'll take the, the exclusion um, the PRE, and we will also divide that in three for each um, natural person. Um, if we look at spouses married in community of property, if the residence falls within the joint estate, of course, then we will also need to apportion the primary residence exclusion between the two spouses, okay, similar to what you would have done over here. So we have Case study one, and you will find this in your study guide. Um, Freddie, he sold property in the 2019 year of assessment in Camps Bay. Um, this was his primary residence that he had bought in November 2010. And then I give you a few scenarios. If it was sold for this and bought for this, what are you going to do? Okay, so let's have a look. If it was sold for proceeds of 1.9 million and its base cost was 1.5. Now the thing, Tip number one that I can give you for a primary residence is you'll always need to do the, cap, the calculation, the capital gain or loss calculation, even if you're dealing with the gross proceeds, because you need to check whether or not you're dealing with a capital gain or loss. So I'm going to go proceeds 1.9 million, less base cost 1.5. That's going to give me a capital gain of 400,000 rand. Then I'm going to go wait. Because my proceeds was less than 2 million rand and I have a capital gain of 400,000 rand, that full 400,000 rand is going to be disregarded in terms of my gross primary residence exclusion, right? So that's if I sell for less than 2 million rand proceeds and I end up in a capital gain. B says I have proceeds of 1.2 million and a base cost of 1.5. So now I'm in a loss situation. So again, if I look at this, my proceeds is less than 2 million. So I want to go, oh, but everything then is disregarded. But no, you can't, right? Because even though your proceeds are less than 2 million, because you are working with or end up with a capital loss, the gross exclusion is not available, but that doesn't mean we don't have any exclusion. Then we move to our normal 2 million rand capital gain or loss exclusion. And the effect of the 2 million rand capital gain or loss exclusion is that it doesn't matter whether you end up with a capital gain or a capital loss, a loss in this case, the first 2 million of that gain or loss will be excluded, right? So this, the 2 million rand gain or loss um, is really nice if you use it, you know, if you end up with a capital gain in this calculation, but it's not so nice if you end up with a capital loss. Because remember, we like as taxpayers capital losses because, you know, that reduces our, um, um, our sum of capital gains and losses. Sash so doesn't like it that much. So the moment I end up in a loss, in terms of my capital gain or my, my primary residence calculation, the first 2 million rand of that loss will also be excluded. Now, to get a negative to a positive, we have to add, and therefore we end up with a zero effect. If our proceeds is 4.5 million, so now immediately I don't have to look at the 2 million rand um, gross exclusion because my proceeds are not less than, than 2 million. What I'm going to do is say proceeds less 1.5 base cost, so it's 4.5 less 1.5, that gives me 3 million rand. Oh, that should be a capital gain, sorry, that's a, a typo, right? So capital gain, the first 2 million rand of that gain is excluded, and therefore only 1 million rand will be included in my sum of capital gains and losses. If we have proceeds of 2.5 million and we have base cost of 1.5, that leaves us with a capital gain of 1 million rand. And the first 2 million rand of any um, capital gain or loss in primary residence will be excluded. So we will exclude that full 1 million rand. Take note, you can't go into a negative over here. So you can't go 1 million minus 2 is negative 1 million. That's not how it works. We will have to limit this to 2 million.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is what you are you should be able to do with a primary residence exclusion. The only way I can jazz this up is by having you, you know, determine proceeds, maybe have amounts in there that shouldn't be in there, or base cost, you know, what amounts can form part of base cost, improvements, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, alternative or not alternatively, and I can, for example, have more than one owner. What you then have to remember is that you're going to have to divide the capital gain or loss between each of the, the owners. And if it's a primary residence, you will also need to divide the, the primary residence exclusion or apportion the primary residence exclusion to them as well. Right. That concludes the video. Bye.